So thank you very much for joining us here on uh, Busis Nias. Uh, who is Bob Turner? Uh, Bob Turner is a businessman with a beginning career in, in politics. Uh, it is exactly 15 months old. Uh, I'm uh, new to the political process. I see myself as a citizen uh, public servant. I'm here to do a specific job in the short term and then move on. In the last election, uh, you ran against Anthony Weiner, who uh, pretty much was, uh, no one was running against him, and you got some 40% of the vote, which is astounding for a new, uh, a new businessman, citizen, turned politician. <laughs> well, Can you explain that phenomenon? How did that happen? Um, I think we were there at the right time. We ignited a grassroots uh, uh, campaign. We were entirely local. We had no help nationally. Uh, each community, we had a good representation of people who wanted to get involved and did get involved. Um, we uh, organized everything ourselves. We got out the vote. <clears throat> we did our ads. We did our fundraising. Even though we were outspent almost six to one at the end of the day, uh, we did as good a job as was possible. Who are Bob Turner's political heroes? Who do you look up to? Well, uh, I would guess Ronald Reagan is the, uh, uh, the first and foremost. Uh, at a time not unlike what we're living in today, uh, poor economy threatened uh, by, uh, in the Cold War, we seem to be behind the eight ball. He did everything that had to be done and did it properly to get the country back on its feet economically, to restore pride, and to do the job internationally that needed to be done. Ultimately, we were victorious. Whatever people say about Anthony Weiner politically, uh, in terms of the Jewish community, he was one of the biggest supporters of Israel. Uh, can we count on Bob Turner to uh, be as supportive of Israel as uh, Anthony Weiner was? Uh, yes, I, I believe you can. Israel is a sovereign state. It needs to be respected as such. It has unique problems, and it is our outpost in what I think of as the long war uh, with radical uh, Islam. What are your thoughts about, uh, about the American embassy? Where does it belong? Does it belong in Jerusalem? Does it belong in Tel Aviv? Well, I think it belongs in the capital of the Jewish state, and that would be Jerusalem. Um, there have been a few uh, uh, laws co-sponsored by quite a number of people that are still sitting there, not reaching out of committee. Um, I think I would like to help move it out of committee uh, and make it uh, a reality. Uh, and this would be a very good time in the troubles and in the nation's history to do something dramatic like that as a firm statement of where America stands here. What are your thoughts about the uh, Oslo Accords? Uh, recently, there's been some talk in, in Israel based upon the plans of the Palestinians to uh, unilaterally declare a state in September at the United Nations. Uh, some people are saying that Israel shouldn't be following their, Oslo, their part of the Oslo Accords because the Palestinians aren't doing that either. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the, uh uh, most of the negotiations have always been fairly one-sided. Uh, I think if um, the Palestinians repudiate the very last agreement, um, certainly it would free the Israelis to, uh, to do whatever they uh, think uh, best. Um, this uh, United Nations uh, vote, as it were, is not really binding, but it has uh, some international weight. Uh, I think it would be appropriate for the uh, U.S. to uh, repudiate that early. Uh, and more than repudiate, uh, uh, we are funding a lot of projects uh, out of goodwill. Uh, I think when we don't get goodwill in return, we should respond accordingly. When the Prime Minister of Israel was, was here recently, he spoke in front of Congress. Uh, I don't know if you got a chance, if you had a chance to listen to it. What were your thoughts about his speech? Uh, I think the contrast between how the uh, Congress uh, accepted uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and, and how he was received by the uh, White House was stark, stark indeed. Um, 
the uh, Democratic uh, caucus uh, has to back the president. It can be very awkward moments for them. And um, I'd like to see that end. Maybe we have to wait till 2012, but uh, I'd like to start the process September 13th, if I may. What are your thoughts about how this country uh, should be dealing with with this new Arab Spring cropping up in so many countries? Well, as you know, the Arab Spring has been successful in throwing off more secular dictatorships. Um, there is a serious danger on how this way will go. My belief is the only real peace that these, uh, the Muslim world will ever enjoy is if they embrace democracy. That is our uh, uh, gift or could be our gift to them. I think when uh, Iran in the Green Revolution took it to a point and they were pretty much abandoned by America, there was no support either on the internet or financially or even morally by standing up uh, uh, strongly. It was a big mistake. Uh, right now, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood seems to have uh, gained a good deal of ground, particularly in, in uh, Egypt, a, a critical state. Um, I'm not sure we're doing all we can uh, to encourage democracy uh, without having them slide back into another dictatorship. Uh, I believe the majority of people in Egypt want a democracy, want a true freedom. Um, and uh, it is on the cusp right now. It will probably be fought over the next uh, couple of years. How that goes is uh, very important, not only to the state of Israel, but to uh, Western future and, and uh, America. What are your thoughts about uh, going to a totally different subject now about school vouchers? Well, um, I'm now past the uh, the paying area, but uh, my uh, kids are now <laughs> faced with these same problems. Um, New York City, I think, is running eighteen, twenty thousand dollars to educate a public school child. How many children are in private schools, in yeshivas and shuls and, and uh, private schools all over the city? How much money are we saving the taxpayers by taking the burden on ourselves? I think the very least the, the government could do, both city, state and federal, is to uh, uh, allow tax uh, breaks and tax credits. Also, I support uh, vouchers and uh, I would like as much freedom in, in education as possible from, from charter schools to uh, private schools, and if we are supporting public schools, the same ends are achieved through the private schools. The economy, especially in New York, is in a mess lately. What are your thoughts, when and if you get into Washington, to help shore up the business sector, the private sector, especially in New York? All right. Um, I've started a few businesses. I have an idea what it takes, and uh, what it doesn't take is more regulation and more taxes. Uh, we need to trust the entrepreneurs, the people who will create the jobs. What they need is access to capital and an easy road through the regulatory uh, process. Right now, we seem to be sending businesses overseas with a 35 percent uh, corporate tax. And the regulations, as they are, particularly in this uh, 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 Dodd Frank bill. We are harming businesses. We are sending them out of the, uh, even out of the country. We have to recognize that. Free up uh, the capital markets, give people incentives to put money into new businesses, trust the um, entrepreneurial spirit of the American worker and businessman. They'll create the jobs, they'll get the job to, done. Uh, th this is uh, a, a incredibly innovative society. Americans have, last year, despite all these problems, we had 400,000 new patterns uh, registered in Washington. Let these guys loose. There's capital there. Uh, give them the, the incentives and, and they'll take the risks. They'll do it with, on their own nickel. Did you ever read Atlas Shrugged? 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here on Bus is Nice. Well, and uh, thank you. we appreciate your uh, letting our readers be exposed to uh, your views. Good luck. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you.